Hi, welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a good lunch, good break. I'm sure you enjoyed the sessions from this morning. I'm super happy to introduce you to Kevin Elliott of WeWa Films. Kevin and I are new friends, but he is amazing at the talk he's going to do today about getting on the brand wagon and how you could do certain things to really scale your branding like the big boys do. I was fortunate enough to meet Kevin through Annie Holcomb, which you guys may have caught earlier on the Alex and Annie show, was one of our second keynotes of the day. So I'm going to leave you, Kevin, to tell all your background and kick us off. And you guys enjoy. Thank you, Jim. Hello, everybody. I hope you're enjoying Desticon. It's super cool. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for jumping into this session. And my goal is to make it super valuable for you and super practical. Um, I do. So I own a film company and I saw Lori Rowe was in this session and she's probably the only one. I don't know how many of you might be from North Florida, but probably know even what WeWa is. So my company's called WeWa Films and Lori can tell you it's actually a place. It's a very small town in North Florida, near Panama City, Florida. It's short for WeWa Hitchka. And my business partner is from there and lives there. And so anyway, I can, I, if, if Lori could, you could see Lori, she'd be nodding her head. She knows, she knows we will. So that, that's, that's us. I own a film company, but I also have a background in marketing and corporate communications. And my master's degree is in corporate and public communication. I've worked for adver advertising firms. And so I'm, I'm not just a filmmaker. I have a, I do have a background in this stuff. I'm also a, uh, an adjunct college professor at the Florida state university. And I, I teach this stuff and have for about 10 years. Uh, so that's me. Uh, I wish we had time or we, uh, if we were in person, go around the room because uh, we, we have a, a, a size group that I think would be good to talk and interact. Because I'm a college professor, you're not going to bother me at all if you put stuff in the chat or Q&A or whatever uh, as we go. I will just kind of default to waiting to the end and we'll go through if there, if there are any questions or, or chat or whatever. We'll talk about them because I know I don't think you guys can pipe in on your end of things. But it, as you think of it, stick it out there. Dakota's watching it. Um, I'll jump back in. You won't bother me. You won't get me off. I'm, I'm used to talking to a room full of 19 year olds. So I'm fine. <laughs> oh, no. So I'll jump right in. One of my favorite things about working with destination marketing folks and smaller locations and people with businesses or DMOs or, or whatever is I like this. I like your smallness. I like it that you're not. So I, I'm, I'm going to do a lot of Florida references. I'm a Florida guy. So you're not Miami and you're not necessarily Tampa. You're not Disney World. And so you don't have those budgets. But what can you do? What can you do given your resources, which are much more limited than everybody else? And the thing I love, the good news I love to bring to people like you is that you can do a lot. You're already doing a lot. I've learned that, the, that your community and these people are super resourceful and creative and I, and I love that because we have the constraints that others may maybe don't have. But the one thing, too, is that all successful branding and growth is built on the same principles. The same principles that we and McDonald's and Coca-Cola have are exactly the ones you have and you can use to grow and to get the people that are ideal for you to where they come find you. That's what you want, right? They'll come find, they'll come seek you out and come to your place or come to your business or come whatever it happens to be. It's happened with WeWall Films. And I'm going to tell a story about that in a second. And I want to give you those principles and tell you how people's brains work, how they actually work with brands. We sometimes have some misunderstandings of the way our own brains think about brands. So that, that's what Get on the Brand Wagon is all about. I want to give you some things that big, the biggest brands in the world know and use and do that you may already be doing, but if not, you could start using and you can start using them today. So let me share my screen and we will jump right in. Okay. There I am. Get on the brand wagon, Kevin Elliott. And let me tell you a story. That happened to me. And even though I've been teaching this stuff for years and I read a lot of books and I know this stuff, sometimes you even forget your own principles and it catches you off guard. It catches you by surprise. Um, let me introduce you to Tracy Johnstone. Now, if uh, Laura, you may know Tracy, I don't know, but there are, if you're in Panama City, Florida, or, or certainly if you ever 
or were in the McDonald's organization, uh, you know Tracy Johnstone. She was a local McDonald's owner operator for 30 years. She owned a bunch of restaurants and she was a pretty big player in the National McDonald's organization. I could talk about Tracy all day, but anyway, we started We Wall Films and we have started putting our work out there and, and doing all our marketing like you do. And one day I got a random message from Tracy on Facebook. And she said, you don't know me and I, I don't really know you, but I've been following your work at We Wall Films and I want to work with you. I don't even know what project I want to do yet, but I know I, I know I want you all to work with me on a project. Now, that is the dream message everybody wants. I didn't have to spend a lot of money to go find her. She came to me and she said, I want to work with you. I don't even know how, but what you have, I want. Now, I wish I could have said I started with some master plan to do that. I didn't. I should have known. But it worked. Okay. That's what we all want. Whatever your version of that is. For me, it's making videos. I want people to come to me and go, I want to do video work with you. For you, you may be a destination. I want to come to your destination because I've heard these things about it. I know it's for me. That's the goal. So the more I got to thinking about that and the more we started to market, it started to happen more and more. So we did, we did with, work with McDonald's. But then my phones just kept ringing. The more we put the stuff out there, more and more. And then DMOs started calling me, like Destination Panama City, Gulf County, Florida Tourism. Um, we just are honored. If there's anybody from, from uh, CCTC, Central Coast, California, we were just selected to be on a project with them that we are out of our minds excited about. It just kept happening over and over again. And it was across industry. So you'll see on this, on this we have everything from, from McDonald's to a credit union, to a theater company, to destination marketing organizations, to HCA hospitals. But what they were all coming to me for was this style that we had. They all wanted that. And that got me really thinking hard. Like, okay, what's going on here? First of all, party, because people are soliciting your business. They're coming to wherever you are. They're visiting whatever. If you're just excited. You're just pumped that it's happening. But then my marketing brain goes, okay, what's going on here? Because I want to make sure I understand it. And then I want to make sure I replicate it. And I want you to do the same thing. So what I learned, and I went back to my books and I went back to my thinking, and I was like, okay, this makes sense now. Is if you want to build a big name, if you want to be like a big brand, right? Even if we're not going to be Apple or Nike or McDonald's, you can, and if you, if you want to, have a big name in your world with your audiences. If you want to be big, you have to think small. What I mean by that is you have to think very, very specifically. And it's hard for us to do because we don't want to say no to people. So if I were to, if I were a consultant, like Jen does with you all, does marketing with you, and she may, I don't know if she says it to you or not, but sometimes you'll go and be like, listen, you should focus on fewer people. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get fewer people to come, but you should focus down on fewer avatars, fewer marketing personas, few focus. That makes a lot of us nervous because, of course, we want all the business we can get and we want to. But that's not how brands do it. That's not how we actually think about brands. And when you start to think very, very specifically about this and how people really interact with brands. And I hope to show you something maybe you haven't seen before that was going to help us think differently and change the, that framework in our mind to help you really niche down, focus it. I heard, I'm reading a book right now by a guy named Alex Hormozzi, um, who's an incredibly successful business guy, but he consults with people and he says, sometimes I have to niche slap people because they're getting too broad. He's like, you have to niche down. Don't make me niche slap you is what he said, which I, I love. Okay because I didn't come up with any of this. <laughs> there are simply smart people out there that I've read their books, stole this stuff from, and it's worked for me. I know it's worked for some of you. And maybe this is a reminder. Maybe if not, this is, this is new to you. But this book, I don't care what business, what organization, what industry, what you do in your life. If you are in business of any kind, you absolutely need to buy this book today and read it. It's called Positioning by Al Reese and Jack Trout. You may know these two guys. They are 
Um, they are the premier names when it comes to positioning and marketing strategy. They, uh, we've all heard the term guerrilla marketing. Um, they coined that term. They wrote a book called Guerrilla Marketing. Like the, that's who these guys are. And this book, we've all done this. We've all read books that don't just affect us or we learn one thing. There are books out there that change the mental furniture in your brain. Like they are bedrock, foundational, changed everything for you. And that's what this book did for me. So I get everything I'm about to tell you comes right out of Reese and Trout. You should read everything they ever wrote. I have because I, it, it's it's just the best. Okay, so there are two steps to positioning because that's what I'm. That's really what we're talking about when you when you're talking about your brand, my brand, your brand, any brand. You look out across the field of whatever your industry is or whatever you're whatever you're into, and consumers. Let's start thinking like our cu customers now. They look out across, and they're looking for clearly positioned brands. So in the DMO space, we know there are, I live in North Florida, for goodness sake, Florida, that's what we do here, right? So, and, and Lori can tell you in North Florida alone, we have like four or five very distinct markets that, okay, that, those are positions, but there's only two steps to positions and they are categories. Step one is categories and, this, and step two is words. And I'm going to break these down and show you how our brains are wired, are mapped to these two steps to help us make choices for which brands we will be a part of, we will give money to, uh, we will we will solicit. So step number one, categories. I want to do a schematic. This is where I, like if I had a whiteboard, I wish I could draw this out for everybody. So I took the, I took the general, let's talk about categories of things and our, and our big overall topic is just stuff we use. Okay, let's not get too specific just yet. Just, just things in our lives, stuff that all of us are, have, have spent money on. And you can see them across here. Sodas, social media platforms, phones, theme parks, and vehicles. I just pick kind of at random. Now, um, I am in Florida. I'm a Florida guy. And so theme parks is an obvious, you know, it's part of our life, okay? So let's pick theme parks. So if I, if I say to you, matter of fact, you have already, the moment I said theme parks, I promise you two or three names, words, brands, popped into your mind. You're already thinking of them. I don't know which ones they are, but I know you're thinking of them. So if you're in Atlanta, maybe you're thinking of Six Flags. If you are in some other place, maybe you're thinking whatever the one that you went to as a kid. I don't know. But you're thinking, now, if I were to go around the room, if we were if we were together, I would say, which ones are you thinking of? And tell me, and I'll bet you, some of us will have some common ones. And then some of us across the room would have, we probably have, I don't know, a dozen different theme parks. Okay, that, that's a category, theme parks. However, watch what happens when I give you just one more word. What if I say Florida theme parks? You just thought probably of two brands, two theme parks. Now, are there some other ones? Yes, there are. But what Reese and Trout say is that you usually have two big brands in a category, and then you have a lot of also brands. Now, they can make a lot of money, but they're not the big ones. And we want to think like the big ones, right? That's who we want to be in our category. You probably thought of Disney and Universal. Probably. I'll bet you if I went around the room, probably 90% of this room, those are the two brands. I added one word to our category to specify it, and those two brands have grabbed those words. Let's do it again. Vehicles. Now, I can think of vehicle brands, car brands, trucks, whatever, vehicles. And you, again, same exercise. We would think of all kinds of things. But what if I were to say American, Japanese, and German? In every one of those categories, your brain just assigned two names. If I say American trucks, what did you think of? You thought of Ford and Chevy. And if I were to do this for Japanese and this is how we actually assign brain brands in our brands. It's not our logos. It's not our brand standards. It's not our colors. It's not our, it's not our voice. All those things are important. Don't get me wrong. Those are important, but those are downstream of this exercise right here. Recent Trout will tell you, if you don't own one of those two categories, you cannot dominate your category. You can't. It's just our brains won't let that in. So 
Think like that. If I were to go German luxury cars, you probably thought of two brands, maybe three. You probably thought Mercedes and BMW, maybe Audi. But if you look at the revenue of these companies, these are the big dogs. You want to be a big dog in your category. You don't have to be a big dog globally. You want to be a big dog in your little world. But this is how it works. So bottom line is only two brands get to live and only two big dogs get to live in every category. So if you've been trying to compete against somebody who's similar to you in your category and you just can't get in there, you just can't get. I want to tell you, you aren't gonna. Now, don't despair. Don't despair. I have good news for you. That's coming later. But the bottom line, and these are and these are laws. These are laws like the laws of physics. This is not negotiable. We can't figure out a new way to do it a different way. This is how the human brain works. Two brands per category. Okay, so that's categories. And I bet you've already thought of a bunch of different <laughs> in your world, in your market, you've already started thinking, okay, what is my category? Number two, words. Brands are words in our minds. Now that's counterintuitive because we know that humans are visual first. We know that we take in visuals 300 times faster than we take in words. Now, all that's true. It's why people like me exist, video people. It's why people like Jen with her company and they do graphic design. All that stuff is super important, but the counterintuitive but very true thing is that with brands, we think of them as words in our mind. And so that's important for us to dwell on. Let's go back to our stuff we use example. I didn't put any logos up here. I didn't put any, so I left it black and white on purpose, very boring, because I wanted to show you the power of these individual words, because what happened when you saw those words, the pictures came to your mind. You saw the Mercedes logo. You saw the Ford truck your dad used to have. You saw Disney World, You saw whatever, whatever it was. Your brain will do the rest if I just give you the words. So vehicles, German, luxury, magic words. American, trucks, magic words. Focus on the words. And once you get the words right, what words in a category are that nobody owns in your little world? So say I'm a DMO, say I'm in Panama City, Florida. We go through this. I, I've worked with, um, De with Destination Panama City here. They're amazing people. They're so good. But Jennifer Vigil, who's there, worked really hard to differentiate Panama City from Panama City Beach, which you may not know the difference in those two, but I'll tell you, those are two drastically different <laughs> markets, but most people don't know. And so what are the words, those single words in, the, in that category? We're in that, but we're also, Panama City, the city is probably not competing with well, I know they're not really competing with like, I don't know, Omaha. Because Omaha can own a word, the same word that Panama City owns because we're in different categories, right? We're in different markets all together. So this is not a universally global thing because we're not global companies. Global companies deal globally. We deal where we are. So think about, look at the landscape of your market right where you are, who your competitors are, and all you need is one differentiating word. Once you land on that, all you have to do is jump up, on, jump up and down on that word forever. So the bottom line is brand words matter most. They matter more than your visuals. They matter more than your logo. They matter more than anything. And the number one mistake that brands make is they dilute their brand by having to, trying to associate too many different ideas, words, things, with your brand, it simply won't work. This works for Apple. This will work on an ice cream shop on a corner in a small rural town. It always works if you get this right. Think of every brand as in your life. If you look around my desk, if you look around wherever you happen to be sitting, your clothes, the everything, this is how we do it. So that's good news for you. The only two questions now that I have for you or what is your category? What is your word? It's one of those things in life that's very simple, 
to understand, but it's very hard to do. It's really hard to do. And it, and this is one thing, I don't know if I did it inadvertently, but it's what, with We Wall Films, it's what got Tracy to call me. It's what got those other people to call, to call me, is that I owned a category and a word. If you, the goal is to define a category and a word that you can own, that you can get into first. You've probably all heard the pioneering advantage. There's a pioneering advantage, in, it's a marketing term. If you get in first, you're the, you're the de facto leader. But even if you don't get in right first, if you can get the category ahead of the people who are already there and get that into people's minds, here's the good news. You own it forever, forever. You have to do something incredibly stupid to lose your dominant category in word. Think Disney, think Google. Google was not the first um, search engine by those of us who are like approaching 50 years old, we remember the, the, the early primordial internet. Remember Netscape Navigator? Remember Juno? Remember all the right, AOL? Um, those were all on the playing field, but Google, they came in late to the party, but once they did, they grabbed that category and you can be Yahoo. And I'm sure, yeah, Jim, Jim met her husband on Yahoo. Like, you can be Yahoo? Yahoo was out way before uh, Google was. Google grabbed that category. And the way we know that they own that category is because we Google things. We don't Yahoo things. We use Band-Aids, not adhesive waterproof bandages. We drive Jeeps. What is a Jeep? Is it a truck? Is it a car? No, it's a Jeep. There's only, they just own the category. That's what you're going for. And maybe, yeah, Jen, maybe we can revive Yahoo chat and make it a thing again. We'll bring back MySpace too while we're at it. Facebook, by the way, there's another good example is that MySpace was out there as a good social platform. Facebook jumped in, grabbed the category, and you can say what you want about Facebook, especially young people. And yes, TikTok's put heat on them, and yes, all that stuff. But um, Facebook, if you look at the numbers of people, they're still the big dog in that in that category. Okay, so you want to own a category and work. Do the hard work. What this will do is it will make a filter for you. The really hard work, once you get your category and your word, is saying no to things. Is saying, okay, that means we're going to have to not. We're going to focus on these. It's all we're going to do. We're, we're going to put blinders on to everything else. That's hard. That's hard. But if you do that, if you niche down like that, it will pay off. That is your position. That's what this is all about. Once you get that down, once you nail it down, and you, what, some remarkable things will happen to you. So that's your position. Um, here's, here's ours. We Wall Films, I told you. I, and again, I wish I could say I was this marketing mastermind that had this all figured out at the beginning. I didn't. I should have, but I didn't. But then once I saw it, I think maybe my instincts or just experience did. So if you go to the video, people who make videos, stuff we use, video, there are generally two categories in, in my world. There are freelancers. And there are firms, companies, lots and lots of freelancers out there. People, because it's it's very accessible. You can go buy a camera for a few thousand bucks. You can start making videos. And that's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's let a lot of people express themselves. But th that's the two big buckets. You have freelancers and then you have firms who have just you know a little bit bigger operations. We're a firm. Okay? So we are a firm. So it, now I've, I've, all the freelancers, you know, put them to the side. Inside that, in the firms that I, I looked around out there, who's, who's doing this work in my world, we grab the word heartfelt. Heartfelt. It'll make you feel something. Our videos are emotional. Our B-roll is emotional. I don't know how Courtney, my business partner, does it. She's a genius, but she somehow can make something with no words grab your heart. Um, and that's just what came out of us when we started this company. That's just the kind of stuff we like to do. Very documentary style, very heartfelt. Okay. We put that out into the world, and that's why all those brands across industries came. I didn't market banks and McDonald's and DMOs. It was the byproduct of us focusing on one category and one word. And they came to us and continue to come to us for that. And the beautiful thing about that is, is I don't get a lot of calls from people who want something we don't offer. You ever done this? 
people will call you and they'll say, hey, do you do this or can you do that? And you'll have to tell them, no, that's not really our thing. And you have these, it's a lot of wasted time in qualifying either leads or people or prospects, whatever it is. When you focus like this on category and word, it's a, it's a filter for you. It's also a filter for them because our brains are so full of stuff every day, every day, too much information. We need someone to give us a shortcut to make decisions. And if you can do this, you're doing people a favor going, here is our very clear category. Here's our very clear word. Then they go, I either want that or I do not. Nice, clean choices. They call it heuristics. I have to throw words out like that every once in a while um, to make the money I spent on my graduate degree worth it. So it's a heuristics. They're called mental shortcuts. Another heuristic, by the way, the most common heuristic is called the price quality heuristic, is if something costs more, it must be more valuable. Our, whether that's true or not, our brains believe it. It's a mental shortcut. It's why nobody wants to buy a cheap Mercedes, right? They're a luxury brand. You want to pay luxury money. Okay. That's what you're going for. And when you do that, people will now know clearly if they want it, and you'll just get the people who want it. Isn't that good news? <laughs> that's what we all want. People come to us like Tracy and just say, I want what you have. No questions asked. Okay. So then we fold that word. Once we get that word, your job is to never, ever, ever stop talking about it. You say it in every, every presentation, every whatever it is, you put it on all your marketing. That is your word. You just, you just never, ever, ever stop saying it. How many times have you heard Disney say the word magic? They named an entire kingdom, the magic kingdom, the magic of childhood, the magic, the Disney magic, magic, right? Okay. That's what you're going for. So heartfelt, we put it on there. So we, that, that's, we, we did that. We put it everywhere. That's why these people came to us. They want that style. They want that look. They want that, like for Central Coast, we're shooting B-roll. We're not even doing interviews, but it's going to have that same, like it's, you want to, you want, it'll, people will be attached. They'll see it. They just feel something. That's what we're going for. And so this is, let me show you what happened one day. This is, uh, this is a screenshot of a social post by a friend, a, guy, a friend of mine. He's actually a videographer, owns a company uh, where I live named Jason. He's a super nice guy. And he wrote this really lovely post about friends of his who were in the business. But I want to call your attention to the, this right here. And he, he was just saying, if someone comes to me wanting a heartfelt, beautiful documentary that brings tears to the room, I know Kevin at Wall Films. He's using my words. Now, I didn't call Jason and go, hey, man, use the word heartfelt anytime you talk about me. I didn't, I didn't do that. didn't have to. So you're doing people a favor by giving them a clean, clear word, because now you're giving them the vocabulary to talk about you. Isn't that great? Isn't that what you want? You want to give them, you don't want them guessing. You want to be able to say, use this word whenever you talk about me. And when you focus down, when you really get it crystal clear, that's what they'll do. They'll start repeating your words back to you. And then you know you've got it. Because then when they're talking to other people about you, one, they're going to talk to people who probably are more likely to want what you want, want what you give anyway. And they're using your words, your vocabulary. You're controlling your message and you marketers out there understand, publicity people understand the incredible importance of controlling your message, your talking points. We'll give them to people and they use them. So here's the hard question. <laughs> I get this one every time I present on this. What if somebody already has my position? What if I look around and go, oh, shoot. I'm like the fourth one in my category that's trying after this word. Somebody already owns my position. There are already big dogs in my play yard. That's a discouraging moment. <laughs> most people, most people, what they do is they'll, they'll go, well, we just have to market harder. We just have to do more marketing and we're going to outcompete them. We're going to spend more money. We're going to do more events. We're going to market, market, market. And I'm here to tell you that that unfortunately will not work. It just won't work uh, because once human beings, this is, again, this is the rule. Once human beings, we get a word and a category in our brain and we assign those two big brands to it. We, we will not change our minds. 
We just won't. We don't want to. And humans don't like changing our minds. When we stick with it. It's why every brand out there wants to get people um, loyal to them in their 20s. Because we know once we get you when you're young, you'll never, you'll never stop. My business partner is a millennial. She's 17 years younger than I am. So she's the Starbucks generation, right? I know the Gen Z folks out there. I think Dakota, maybe. I don't know. I asked her raise her hand. They're, they're leaning more toward Dunkin' Donuts. I don't even call it Dunkin' Donuts anymore. That's how old I am. Dunkin', right? She will drink Starbucks the whole rest of her living days, my business partner. She, everywhere we go, if we travel on a trip, we got to find the nearest Starbucks. It's just, just never, you're never going to convince her otherwise. Dakota, Duncan, am I right? <laughs> okay. This is how, so you, you get that word in your brain. You can spend all the money in the world and you won't get it. Example, that's happened just very recently. We all know the, um, we all know the, the Apple Android battle going on, right? For smartphones. There's, there's mine right there. Okay. Now, we know also, because Apple is one of the best in the world at this, that there are Apple people. Apple people. They feel what they feel about their brand, and you can't tell them otherwise. But there are also Android people. A true confession, true confession, and you, you Apple people don't feel less about me, even though you might. I'm an Android guy. I just, there you go. My business partner, my daughter, they all scold. I get it. But Apple and in the Android world, Samsung. If I were to say to you, cell phones, high end, right? Category cell phone, word, high end, you're going to think iPhone. And if you're an Android person, you're going to think Samsung, probably the Samsung Galaxy. Those two companies have grabbed, those are the big dogs in that category and word, okay? Michelle, Android person, you're with me. We'll talk later. We'll do therapy because these Apple people get mean with us sometimes. I know. The So in that, in that word, you have iPhone and you have Samsung Galaxy. They own that word. Now, Google, remember big dog Google, search engine, big dog Google. They have a cell phone. And you Apple people probably don't know this, but they have a cell phone called the Google Pixel. And Google decided a few years ago, we're going to get into the cell phone game because they already own Android. They bought the, the operating system. We're going to make a phone called the Pixel. And we're going to compete with the iPhone and the, and the Samsung phones. And the first Google Pixels that came out were super high end, amazing cameras. They were very expensive. And they, they tried to get up into that category. Okay, they did that for a few years, and I had one. I had a Google Pixel, and I loved it. It was great. But then I noticed, long about Pixel 3, they came out, and their price point dropped by about a third. And I noticed this because I happened to own a Pixel at the time. I was like, well, that's weird. I mean, we're talking like dropped several hundred dollars off the price of this phone. And I'm like, hmm. So then my marketing brand, I'm starting watching. I'm like, what are they doing? And I got another Pixel. I upgraded and got the next Pixel. And I got it way cheaper. And I'm like, wow, this is great. Okay, cool. But then I noticed it was a really good phone. But it wasn't quite as good. It wasn't quite as good as that one I have. The camera was really good, but not like really. And then it dawned on me. Is that Google tried to break the rules. They tried. They thought they had all their money. And they're going to come in there and they're going to push iPhone off this way. They're going to push Samsung out that way. And they're going to live in this top dog quality phone category. And they thought they could buy their way in. And guess what? They didn't. They didn't make it. Because the people, <laughs> once we get it in our brains, I don't care how much money you spend. So what they've done is they've dropped the price point. They've also dropped the features. And that means now they're playing at a mid-tier. In other words, they went into a different category. And they're probably going to own that category. Because it's never going to be a cheap iPhone, right? So they're going to own that mid-tier category. You want a phone for 600 bucks? Come get a Pixel. And they're going to own it. And they're going to make a lot of money. And that's fine. So what I'm telling you is, what if somebody has your position? If Google couldn't do it, please understand me, you can't either. You're just, you're just not going to do it, okay? But there is good news. There's very good news. You can still own a category, okay? So what happens if somebody has your position? Do what Chick-fil-A did. Now, 
I don't know where everybody is from around the country, but I know you Southerners out there, you know, this, this brand is gigantic in the Southeast. And I don't know where else, if you're on the West Coast, I don't know, does somebody pipe in if we have Chick-fil-A's in the West Coast or out West, I have no idea. But in the South, um, Chick-fil-A is a big deal. It's a very, very, very big deal. And here's why. Same principles that we've been talking about. Okay, so okay, so the Chick-fil-A gin, they've made it to Arizona. Okay, so you know, I don't know if they have the place in the heart out there in the West, but in, in the South, don't mess with people's Chick-fil-A. It's like a they have feelings about it. And actually they have feelings about it because of these principles. Let me show you. Go back to our schematic. So we have stuff people use. Let's go to fast food. And I learned, by the way, if you're in this industry, they call it quick service restaurants, QSRs, quick service. But anyway, little inside terms, fast food. Now, if I were to say hamburgers, category fast food, word, hamburgers, you've already thought of a couple brands. Uh, brands. Now, depending on your age, you might think of two different this landscape has changed over time, but if you're a guy like me, you grew up in the 80s. If you're a Gen, Gen what am I? We're Gen X. You thought of two brands. I promise they were McDonald's and Burger King. Now, there are, because that's where we went as kids, right? Gen, we used to play in the playgrounds out there. We would go get our caramel, our caramel ice cream things, and we'd get our Happy Meals. I mean, this, okay, it's, we have emotional connections to this, to this brand. Young, I bet if I asked Dakota, she would probably think of different burger joints, but she'd probably only think of two or three because that's just how it works. All right. So fast food, hamburgers, McDonald's and Burger King. Now, if I'm true at Kathy, who founded Chick-fil-A, and I want to grow my own quick service restaurant chain, I have two choices. I can go up against these people. I can uh, I can try to become the next big burger thing, which a lot of people have tried to do. Hardy's has tried to do it. Um, five guys has done it, but that's a whole other thing. Five guys has done it in a different category. They made a different, they made a different pl play on this. But what Truett, Truett Kathy did, the genius of that, he said, hey, you know what? I'm not going to do hamburgers at all. I'm going to open a fast food joint. We're going to do chicken. Now, if I say fast food, chicken, you thought of a few brands. You probably thought of Popeye's. You probably thought of KFC. Okay. It's a, it's a broad category in fast food. But if I add one more word to it and I say chicken sandwich, there are no others. You're not thinking of another one, probably. <laughs> and if you are, you're not thinking of a big one because Chick-fil-A reigns supreme with this category and those words. If you say fast food and chicken sandwich and you're anywhere in the South, maybe out West, no other names come to mind. Now think about that, how powerful that is. If I sub sandwiches, I don't even have to ask. I know who you thought of. You thought of Subway. You might think Jersey Mike's. You might think Firehouse. But the number one and the one who has the biggest business and the one is Subway. And we can do this for Mexican fast food. We can do this for fast casual fast food, Chipotle. You can do this for fast casual Asian food, Panda Express. You, on and on and on. Pick a category. Pick the words. That's how we do it. Now, the good thing about this is is that if you frame it like this, we don't go very wide in our categories. We want only two, but we're deep when it comes to specific words. So you can keep adding these very specific words to niche down. One of my favorite, and, and then you can own that category. One of my favorite is Warby Parker. If I were in this room, I would say, who has Warby Parker glasses? Dollar Shave Club is another good example of super niche down businesses, right? I think Dollar Shave Club got, am I wrong about this? I think they got bought by Unilever or something. Some, I know Ben and Jerry's did. Think of this ice cream. Say so you're gonna come up with a new ice cream brand and you're gonna compete with Briars and all the big, well, guess what? Ben and Jerry did it and they did it because their flavors, they, they had a different word in the category, weird flavors and all this, okay. And they got bought by Unilever. Those guys are billionaires now. The knowing your category, knowing your word, sticking to it, never coming off, focusing on it all the time, and boxing everybody out. Because once you own it, you own it forever. That's the good news. And you're doing consumers a favor because now you're giving them clear choices to let their weary brains 
make fast decisions because we're so full of information. Our brains are just wit. Somebody help me make fast buying decisions to get through my day. If you can do that, you're going to be a, they're going to love you and they're going to give you money. And that's not a bad thing. Okay. So there's Chick-fil-A. You want to be Chick-fil-A. Your brand should be a beacon. If you get it really, if you get it really niched down, if you get it really focused, and I don't like I say, if you're if you're the second or third ice cream shop in your little town, that's fine. If that's your market, look around. The rules apply. If you're a regional DMO, the rules apply. If you're a national business, I don't care. Whatever it is, look around. These rules apply, and they will work for you. It'll be a beacon. If you do that, what happens is you start having experiences like I had, where Tracy just calls you out of the blue. So now what should you do? You know the, the theory, the principles of how this goes. You should make sure you own your category and your word. Own it. You must be number one or number two into your category and word. Ideally, you want to be number one. First is always going to be best because you're going to be the immediate market leader in that world. Number two, not so bad. You can still do great. If you're number three, sorry, it's diminishing return from there down. So make sure and be honest with yourself. Do we own this category in the word? Not do we play in the sandbox? Not are we sometimes like we got to own it. So if you don't own it, you got to a little bit in your messaging and your marketing. And once you get it and you're different, hammer it. Never leave your position. Never leave your position. When I used to work in for marketing firms and stuff like that, our clients would come to us and they go, you know, you know what? We've been having the same messaging and stuff for a long time. And I don't know, you think people are getting bored with it? Should we? Sh and I would always um, quote back to them my, my advertising hero, David Ogilvy, who was, if you don't know, if you're in advertising, you know who David Ogilvy is, I promise. If you don't, um, if you know the show Mad Men, um, that show was based on guys like David Ogilvy. They were the, they were the old school um, modern advertisers. He he did the original. Uh, so David Ogilvy, talking about categories and words, Dove Beauty Bar, okay, and Dove Beauty products. You know why they call it Dove Beauty Bar and they don't call it Dove Soap? Because David Ogilvy knew categories and words. He knew positioning. He wrote the original Dove ads in the in about 1956, 57, calling it a beauty bar because it has lotion in it. He says, we're not saying soap, we say beauty bar. He defined an entire category. And to this day, Dove owns it. They stick the 50s, 1950s. And they're still running the same copy and the same words and the same thing that David Ogilvy wrote in 1956. And David Ogilvy would say this. He said, people ask me, um, when should we stop marketing that way? When should you stop? When should you change your marketing? He said, you should change your marketing when it stops selling. And if it doesn't stop selling, don't change it. Why would you? So it's very easy to get into the, the oh, look what they're doing. Oh my gosh, look at the, no, no, no. If you own a category and a word, that's gold. Never leave it. You camp out and put barbed wire around it. Nobody else gets in. That's your category and word. It's hard work to get one. If you get it, hang on to it for dear life. All right. Do not dilute it. I just spoke to that. Don't try and add more words in. Don't. People aren't bored. Okay. They need that clarity. Never stop talking about it. Never, ever, ever. I will say heartfelt. When I say we won't films, I will say heartfelt video. I, every time. If you hear me, I will wear you out with it. Because I know the value of repetition, frequency. You know, you, you all know this. You're marketing people. You're in the business. Um, reach and frequency. Fre it's the number one failing in marketing, at least to my mind, is we're very good at getting that first reach out there. We're not good at keeping it up. We get tired. And we think our consumers are getting tired, and they're not, because they don't see as many of the, much of this as we do. So never stop talking about it. You do that. And there's a decent chance you're going to start getting customers like Tracy, like I got, who come to you already wanting to spend money. <laughs> they come to you with a wallet open and go, hey, what can we do together? That's what you want. If you're a destination, you want people seeking you out because, oh, my gosh, I heard that you.
word, magic word, and I want that magic word. And here they come. So whatever your industry is, that version, you want Tracy's to show up at your door. That's me. That's it. And I can open this up for questions. I don't know if any came in. Dakota, if there's anything in there or if anybody would like to do a chat or a question or whatever, I want to leave about 15 minutes at the end for open discussion about stuff. I'm going, there's my uh, email, Kevin at WeWall Films. There's my phone number. Matter of fact, there's my, this is this Android cell phone uh, right there is that phone number. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can go, you know, because you all need to see my face even bigger and see if there's any, anything, any feedback or any questions or not uh, or out there from the group. Did I stun you? That's how I'm going to choose to believe it. I just stunned you. Okay. Well, y'all, thank you for coming. Jen, I don't know if you want to jump back in to tie a bow. Oh, no, Jen had to leave. I know she had to go to her next session. Sorry about that. Dakota, and if not, you all have about 15 minutes to go get some coffee or whatever. I, I wish we were together. Um, I'm glad you came to this. And maybe down the road, um, we will be together and we can all sit and have a beer, domestic beer, imported beer, specialty beer, craft beer, right? Those are our categories of words. And every time I said one of those, you thought of your favorite. <laughs> it works all over the place. Thank you all very much for coming. Thanks for taking the time. I know it's, I know it's hard to get time during the middle of the day. And uh, I hope to see all of you in person one day. So thank you.